Hi, I'm Alyssa Ford Morrell. I'm an Extension Master Gardener with the Master Gardeners of Northern Virginia here today to talk about an invasive plant, leather leaf mahonia, Mahonia bilii. It's also sometimes called Beals barberry or holly grape. This is a common shrub in the East Coast, but it is unfortunately formally deemed invasive in much of the Eastern seaboard and as well as in parts of the Midwest. It meets the formal definition of invasiveness, which was actually set out very formally by two executive orders signed by President Clinton and later President Obama in 1999 and 2016, respectively. Those orders say, first of all, that an invasive plant must not be native in the area which it is occurring. And that holds true for this shrub very much because leatherleaf mahonia is from China. It also, those definitions also say that invasiveness depends on a plant being able to escape cultivation and get into the wild, which leatherleaf mahonia does in two ways. It has basal runners. It can kind of just expand by growing larger. And also birds come and eat the tasty berries that look a lot like grapes. And then they fly away into wild spaces and poop it out and new leather leaf mahonias come into existence that way. It also says that an invasive plant must cause harm, uh, harm to a number of things, but one of those things is the environment. And indeed, the mahonia causes harm to the environment because it outcompetes and displaces native plants. It causes dense shade because it's a very dense thicket and outcompetes other plants and keeps spreading and doesn't allow the native plants to exist. If you have leather leaf mahonia in your yard and would like to get rid of it, which I would certainly encourage you to do, you can do it in a couple of ways. One is to actually physically pull it out, either by using a mattock, which you could hack away at the roots and get them out, or a weed wrench, which actually gives you some leverage to pull out a large shrub. If you don't have those tools or wanna to try something else, you can certainly also cut it down to the base and then use an appropriate herbicide on the stumps in order to kill it down to the roots. Now, if you're going to do that, uh, we always recommend that you use protective clothing and that you research your herbicide to make sure it's the right thing and also what the right protective clothing is and that you wear that and be very, very careful as you kill the leather leaf mahonia. You may, with either of these methods, find that you need to come back a few months or up to a year later and do it a second time because these are pretty persistent plants. But you should be able to successfully kill and get rid of it that way. Once you do, we do have three great native alternatives to suggest to you. We're here at the Buddy Ford Nature Center where the Master Gardeners of Northern Virginia maintain a really beautiful demonstration garden. I am here to show you the first of our alternative plants to leather leaf mahonia, and that is high bush blueberry, Vaccinium corumbosum. Unfortunately, we're here right in mid-November and it's already lost most of its leaves for the winter. But fortunately, it's hanging on to just a few and you can see they're a beautiful deep burgundy red. In fact, before it loses its leaves, it's a really stunning shrub. This is a shrub that is really pretty. In the spring, it has lovely white bell-shaped flowers. And of course, then it makes the blue fruit. And yes, it really is the exact same thing 
that we buy from the grocery store that tastes so yummy. And then in the fall, it has the red foliage. And even in winter, it can be quite pretty because the um, branches will hang on to some of that red color, which stands out really nice in the winter. Uh, it's a great shrub. It can grow to be 6 to 12 feet high and uh, 4 to 10 feet wide, so that can be really quite large. Uh, it likes sun. It likes some moist soil. Uh, the most important thing, though, that is a little bit unusual about what it likes is that it really likes significantly acid soil uh, between 4 and 5.2 on the pH scale. So you can either plant it on in a pot where you can really control that pH, or you can acidify your soil. We certainly recommend that before you do that, you want to test your soil and find out what the pH is. Most of Northern Virginia tends to have slightly acidic soil, and so you want to find out for sure what it is before you go messing with that pH. And soil tests are available from the Extension Office, from our plant clinics, and so forth. So blueberry is a great alternative shrub. We're here at the Glen Carlin Library Garden, actually behind the gazebo, to talk about our next replacement plant for leatherleaf mahonia. And that is Ilex glabra, or inkberry. It's one of the large holly family that there's, there's a number of the holly shrubs in our area that are native, but this one is special because it's evergreen. It never drops these nice uh, green leaves that stick with it through winter. And so it's a wonderful decorative element of a lot of yards. The straight species of Ilex glabra grows to be 10 to 12 feet tall and can be even wider than that also. Uh, so it can make a really nice mat if you want some privacy. It's a great choice. There are a number of cultivars that are bred to be different sizes. Uh, so if you want something smaller, you can absolutely look for that. All holly plants are dioecious, meaning that the plants are either male or female. The females are the only ones that have berries. The berries on this plant are very pretty. They're a dark sort of blue-purple color, and they last through much of the winter and are great for wildlife. The males do not have berries. You don't need as many males as you need females. You can have one male and up to 10 females within a 40-foot radius of that male, and they'll all get fertilized and be able to make berries. Take a look at these beautiful red berries that are practically glowing in the afternoon sunshine here in mid-November. These are the berries on Ar Aronia arbutifolia red chokeberry. This is another native shrub that is native to our area, and it is a really lovely plant that can grow also 6 to 12 feet like the ones that we've just been talking about, but they tend to be quite a bit more narrow. And instead, they'll send up little suckers and make a colony that is quite graceful in its appearance. This is a plant that also has quite a bit of interest through the seasons. It has some beautiful white flowers in the spring. Uh, they're actually a member of the rose family. I don't know if you can see the likeness between the uh, chokeberry flowers and a rose, but they are related. Uh, they have the beautiful green leaves and then, of course, the berries that will persist into winter and feed birds throughout winter. They will really love this. It's a great supporter of other animals. Uh, there's a number of uh, 
butterflies and other insects that are supported by this plant. It is a close cousin of the black chokeberry. Do not be deceived by the name chokeberry. It's not something that is bad or toxic to eat and will choke you. Instead, the choke part refers to the fact that it's very astringent and will make your mouth feel kind of puckery. But they're in fact very tasty. It's a, it's a good flavor if you can get over the pucker factor. And in fact, you can make lovely jams and jellies out of the red chokeberry. It likes some moist soil. It likes a bit of sun. It's a pretty cooperative and easy to grow shrub. Whichever of these great native shrubs you choose to replace invasive leatherleaf mahonia, I wish you happy gardening.